Welcome back everyone, my name is Davin Reddy and in this video we'll talk about Scrum. Now if you remember in one of the videos we have talked about Agile and we all know if you want to make modern softwares in this world now, we cannot directly go for a waterfall, we have to go for waterfall in iteration. And we have talked about Agile methodology and why to use them. Now one of the framework using which you can implement Agile is Scrum. Yes, we have other options as well, we have Kanban or we can go for XP. But the widely used framework for Agile is Scrum. But what is Scrum? Now if you go to the website which is scrum.org, they simply say it's a better way of building products. Now how will you define Scrum? So Scrum is a framework of course, it's a lightweight framework. It is simple to understand but difficult to master. You might be thinking who uses Scrum? Scrum is used everywhere. 90% estimated Agile team uses Scrum. It is practiced everywhere and the good thing is it has only one Scrum guide. So there's only one definition of it. Now if you want to understand what is Scrum, how it works, what goes inside Scrum framework and who is responsible to manage everything, let's talk about this thing. Now if you can see the image here, this is the official image from scrum.org. So here what we have is, so let's imagine you want to build a product. You can go with any software, let's talk about Facebook in this case. Now on Facebook you can see we have so many features, right? Now imagine you, do, you don't have a Facebook in this world, now you want to build your own Facebook. Now in this case, of course you have so many requirements. So you can just prioritize the requirements you have. So news feeds are very important, the chat window is very important, or maybe the, or the uh, showing of images, showing of videos are very important. So you can, you know, you can take all those things as important uh, requirements, then you can have the side requirements or you can just prioritize them. So that's one thing, right? First of all, you have to create requirements and then you will start working on the requirements. But if you are following Scrum, Scrum normally goes with Sprint. Now what is Sprint? So let's say the entire project might take one year. But of course you will not be waiting for the entire year to deliver the product. Of course your client will not be waiting for you to deliver product in one year. So what if you can give something to your client every two weeks? Or maybe one week depending upon your speed. So maybe after every week or two weeks or four weeks you will deliver a product. Now this can be a potentially deployable product but not every uh, deployment or every product which you give to your client after four weeks will be deployed but it is potentially so if clients want to deploy it it's their choice right so if you want to do that what you will do is uh, from the entire product requirement you have you will take some requirements for each week right so to understand that so if we have the first one here which is which we normally called as a product backlog uh, so we have the entire backlog here which will have all the requirements from start to end. You can add the requirement later as well, okay? It's not that it is fixed. You can add your requirements and that's why you can see uh, the, we have some small boxes there which are, which we know. So let's say we have a big requirement, you have, you can break it down for the current sprint or for the current week. Other requirements you can just have it as it is. You don't know how to work on it or what are the sub parts of it. We can define them later, right? But let's say if you have a module with you or if you have a set of requirements with you which you can complete in one or two weeks or four weeks. Now that will define your sprint time. So one sprint is one week or two weeks or four weeks. Uh, so let's say if you define for two weeks, that's your first sprint, you will take some requirements from the backlog, right? And you will call the current sprint backlog. So for two weeks, right? Now it will, of course, it will have a less number of uh, requirements. But before that, you have to also plan your sprint, right? What you will take and then what are the requirements we have for this? So basically, we got a product backlog, then you have to plan and then you will get a sprint backlog. Now, once you have a sprint backlog with you and now you have two weeks, let's say this is Monday and for next two weeks, you have to work on this product. So what you will do now, you will start building the product. But who will build it? Of course, we'll talk about roles, but basically we have a scrum team. Now, if you if you are thinking we'll be having a big team, uh, not exactly because we have talked about that in Agile, right? You need a small team, maybe around four to eight people max, right? So on average, we go for six to seven people, right? That's the average we have. So let's say you have a team with you. Now this team will work on the product. And after the first sprint, let's say after two weeks, you will give the first increment. So what is increment? You can imagine this as a potentially shippable product, okay? Uh, so let's say if you are building Facebook, you got a first page where you can post feeds or you can see feeds, that's your first in increment. Now this is not the actual Facebook which you wanted, but you got something, right? You can deploy the product on first two weeks, right? So that's the increment. But it may happen that in your first sprint, you were not able to complete all the sprint backlog. Now what you will do? 
you will send the remaining backlog in the next sprint. Yes, that is possible. Okay, there is no hard and fast rule that you have to complete that. Of course, in the next sprint, you will complete the backlog from the last sprint and you will take some extra from the product backlog, right? Of course, you have to break it down. You have to take it in the current sprint. You have to plan first, right? But before even going for the next sprint, you have to do a sprint retrospective. Now, what is that? Now, think about this. When you are working on a product, let's say after you, you have completed two weeks. Now, in those two weeks, in that first sprint, you understood something, you have learned something, you have you did something well. This is what you do in the retrospective. So normally you talk about what worked well, you talk about what could be improved in the next sprint, and then what will we commit to do in the next sprint, right? And then all the team members, they will have their own comments. So in fact, when we used to work on Scrum, so basically we used to take uh, sticky notes and we used to write the comments, you know, what, what went well, what is something we can do in the next, next sprint. So you can post that on the board. So that is basically your scrum framework. So if you talk about the events here, we have talked about, we have a sprint and then we have to do sprint planning. There will be a daily scrum and that's something we have missed. So every day for 15 minutes, the team member will come together and they will discuss. So this is basically a stand-up meetup. By why stand-up is because you don't have to waste your time discussing every aspect because the moment you sit on a chair, your, your mind goes slow down and then you will talk about something else and then there will be a huge discussion. So to solve that, there will be a stand-up meetup for max to max 15 minutes. And then we have a sprint review and sprint retrospective. If you talk about this, what are the documents you need or the artifacts you need? The first thing you need is product backlog. We have talked about that. This is the entire requirement you have. Uh, then we have sprint backlog for the current sprint, right? And then we have uh, increment, which is the shippable product. But we have one more question here. What are the roles of people here? Example, we have scrum team. Of course, the scrum team will have developers, testers. Apart from that, we have two more important roles here. The first one is the product owner. Now, who is the owner of the product? Of course, not your client. So product owner is someone who will represent a client or the stakeholders, right? So a client will give all the requirements and you will get the requirements from the product owner. So the next one is very important, which is Scrum Master. So who is responsible to manage the entire Scrum working? Of course, our development team, you're focusing more on development work. So we need someone who will manage this Scrum uh, meetup, you know, stand-up meets and then retrospective and helping people uh, achieving tasks. That can be done by Scrum Master. So what are the tasks of Scrum Master? So they will be clearing the obstacles, establishing an environment where the team can work effectively. So they will be also protecting the team from outside interruptions and distractions. And this happens a lot, right? As a developer, you want to focus on your work, right? And normally it takes around half an hour for the developer to get into that zone, right? So when you start working on the machine, it takes at least half an hour to get into that zone. And at that point, if you get a call, if at that time, if, if someone says, hey, we have a meeting, you have to go back and then when you come back, you have to again spend 30 minutes just to get into that zone. So Scrum Master will make sure that you don't have any distraction or unwanted meetings. But what about development team? Do we really have, let's say we have six people, do we really have one uh, tester, one developer, one deployer? Uh, not exactly. This is a cross-functional team. Basically, every person should know everything. So one person will know testing, the same person can be a developer, the same person knows how to design a software, right? The advantage is if you, you're not depending on someone else, if that person is not there in the office on that day, you should not say, no, we don't have a tester, so we can't test the software. You can do it. So the development team is self-organizing and cross-functional. Now, how will you implement this? Now, there's one important thing in Scrum, which is a Scrum board. So basically, you know what is Scrum board? So normally when you work on your requirements, we have a team of six people, right? So you should know what is happening in the project. So there should be a clear picture. What is the progress? Right. So let's say we have six people and they are working. So of course you have a sprint backlog there. So you can create a board something like this where you have the first column where you have the entire backlog. Uh, then you can specify uh, what you're currently working on. That is a to do list. And then what is your current you're currently working on and what is done. Now that is very important here. Now when you say done in, in agile, it is it should be done done. Right. So there's a different definition for done. If the product is not working, it's not done. Okay, so you, you should not say it is 75% done, it is not 80% done. When you say it is 100% done, then it is done. Okay, so that's something you can put in the last column. So basically the, it is developed, it is tested, and it is ready for uh, shipment. So that is, that is your done definition. And if you can do that, you're basically following Agile and you are working in the Scrum framework. So yeah, that's about the Scrum framework. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me in the comment section. And do subscribe for the videos because we'll be having amazing series coming up. Bye-bye everyone.